Well, City of 100 Lovers is a multi-million dollar musical comedy which showcases the places, culture and way of life that attracts millions of tourists to Tamaki Makoto each year. It's a resident show and it's designed to become a permanent fixture at Sky City. It's written by best-selling and award-winning author Justin Brown, who joins us right now. Welcome, Justin. Hi, guys. Good to see you. Really nice to have you here. It's kind of weird having you here because we've been friends for many, many years. Yeah. So nice to be interviewing you. You were on the show earlier this year with your book Kiwi Speak, which I missed because I was travelling at the time. Cuba. Yeah, I know. It's, yeah. it's tough life. I saw the Instagram pics. Yeah, good. Was, yeah. That was what you were meant Wanted to do. Wanted to be there. Yeah, good. Yeah. That yeah. goal achieved then. <laughs> good to have you back here for this. Yes, yeah, good to be here. So Kiwi Speak was obviously la the last one. That's among 30 books for adults and children. Bowling Through India is just another one of them. We know you from radio as well. Is this a first for you in terms of a script? Yeah, this is, uh, it's kind of out there for me. Like I'm typically used to dealing with a, write a book, give it to an editor. Uh, is it good? Is it bad? Should we publish it? Should we not publish it? This uh, was, uh, just came completely out of left field, but I love challenges. And um, they said to me, do you want to put together a, a, a plot for a musical? And I said, Sure. And I got in the car and went, how do you do that? <laughs> and then uh, came up with um, The City of 100 Lovers. So um, Vincent Water, myself, uh, the movie director, we sat down and we had a great four days. Uh, as a creative, this is my favourite part of being a creative, whiteboard, flat whites, let's try and come up with a plot. And so when I googled a co upon um, Tamaki Makoto, which translates to City of 100 Lovers, mm. I went, wow, that's like a golden egg. And yeah. so then I built a script around um, a love story. Um, but the to City of 100 Lovers actually translates, uh, in, in my terms anyway, to, city, um, to love of the land and love of the people, not necessarily people walking around snogging uh, like 100 <laughs> yeah, Well, city. that would be something quite, that would be That's interesting in a musical. another well, musical like, altogether. It really is. Yeah, so it was a real privilege to put it together. But there's 158 people in the show. So I purely, I laid the egg. I gave the, the document to a guy in, in America, Peter Kellogg, who's a Broadway writer. He put it together and over the, over the last year we've now done the dance and we've worked together which lines are good, which mm. lines aren't good. And, and, and so City of 100 And here's your baby. Born. You know what's wow. fascinating though, you just mentioned, you just dropped that name in there before, that you and Vincent Ward sat down with the whiteboard. Now Vincent Ward, I mean I studied Vigil at school, um, What Dreams May Come with Robin Williams. Um, he's done so many amazing mm. movies. Was that like a pinch me moment for you? Completely, you completely and utterly. And we could just, you know, a bit of Pinot Gris involved and uh, to come up with an idea, but the, that's, that's my favourite, absolute favourite part of it. So it was a, it was a great honour to work with, to work with mm. Vincent Ward. And we'd have arguments, we'd have uh, like, you know, he'd say, well that idea's crap, okay, well give me something better. And we like, I'm and, arguing with Vincent Ward about But that's my favourite part, because you have to argue and be ruthless with an idea before you get something which uh, everyone will appreciate on stage. So, described as a musical comedy, what is it actually about? Uh, it's about a, a Sally is a um, recently divorced New York food writer and she's just um, dumped her husband Don and she's in New York and her Australian, because uh, there's a very annoying Australian in the, in the show, which is important. <laughs> uh, and uh, so Dee Dee, she, she gives uh, Sally a job to go to the City of 100 Lovers uh, to write, a, to write a, a, a show about, to write about food. Right. And so she says, great, City of 100 Lovers, is it Buenos Aires, is it Paris? And it's like, Auckland, oh God. <laughs> and so she flies over here, she falls in love with a charming uh, Māori tour guide called TJ, but of course uh, halfway through escalation happens and Don turns up, he's the ex-husband in his helicopter wanting to buy land. And uh, Dee Dee turns up too, she's the annoying Australian and she does a <laughs> hilarious song about uh, having a fling halfway through, there's a, there's a bed scene, it's quite funny, uh, which was my daughter's favourite part of the show, it's very weird. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so that's that's effectively the story. She falls in love with TJ, falls in love with the land, but will she go back with Don or will she um, you know, stay here in New Zealand with TJ? Oh, that sounds really fascinating. Mm. Huge cast, as you said, and there's a haka in it, which is something quite special. Oh, the haka is, yeah, it's it's amazing because we dealt with um, Paul de Sharples um, and Waharoi Shortland and they were incredible at flipping the haka. So whenever we see the haka, I don't speak today properly, well, even at all actually, so when I hear the All Blacks do the haka, I don't know what they're doing, I know it's just scary. Mm. So these guys have absolutely flipped it and the, the women in black, instead of the All Blacks, we're using the women in black in this because we wanted to, and they, they do a haka at the end in English. 
which is horrific. And like when you when you hear it, we're going. I can't even say the words they use in this. But again, it was my daughter's favourite part of the show. We're going to rip out your blah 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 and all this uh -huh. sort of stuff. And so they've actually flipped it to be in English so that we can understand what the haka wow. is. And I, it was wow. one of my favourite parts of the show because. Uh, and my sister-in-law too, she said um, when she watches the show, it, it's reflective of her as a Kiwi. It, that was the biggest compliment. She said, I actually see what I'm like when tourists arrive mm. here. This is what people see. Wow. wow. So, yeah, it's fun. So Tony, the director, is from New York. What does he make of our local talent? He loved it. He, um, well, again, that Māori angle. And when Tony left, he had worked on the show for a long time with 158 cast. And at the leaving party, when they did a full-on haka with 50 people, he was in tears. And they went around and hugged him individually. The hugs took about an hour, because they walked to the front of the line to hug Tony. He's an incredible, incredible director. He's very open-minded, so if you throw an idea at him, he, he will always you know, weigh it up to see whether it's the best one. And he loved the show, he loved the cast, he loved the country, and yeah, he, he cried when he left. So. Awesome, oh, all got to yeah. go. Justin, it yeah. sounds incredible. Musical comedy City of a Hundred Lovers plays at Auckland Sky City Theatre. You've got a chance to go and see it too, because it's going to be on for a while. Check out the website on screen for